Well, I've got a real hot painting tutorial for you guys today, and we're going to be painting the Efreet uh, Sword Dancers, and they are primed in a matte white. Uh, this is from Parabellum Games. We're going to show you how to create some flames and fire using the War Paints Fanatics range here. We're using a flexible triad in the oranges here, which we're starting off with inner light. I want to thank Parabellum Games for sending me this box. Uh, they sent this to me to demo it, to take a look at it, to build it, to paint it, and to showcase it on the channel. Again, thank you very much. And if you guys want to save on Conquest, take a look at their eShop and use East Mini 10, and you'll save 10% on everything you buy on their website. And you'll also help support the channel. A small uh, profit goes to me to be able to buy more products from them. Even though I do not play the game, I love their miniatures. I used to love playing the game, actually, but no one played the first Blood version, which is what I like the most, which is a skirmish game. And uh, anyways, let's come back to the paint here for a quick second. We're using inner light, like I said. This is a tr flexible triad in the oranges colors. Uh, as you can see, it covers again beautifully over this matte white. And the reason why I used matte white and not black is because I wanted the colors to really pop. All right, and the next color we're using is lava orange, which is, and I added in a little bit a, of stabilizer to water it down a little bit more. You can see on the on my wet palette there, and I don't know if I'm using my wet palette properly, but it's wet, it's anyways. But now I'm pretty much just trying to go over it like a sort of wash dry brush or a wet brush, like a wet brushing, uh, where it's covering up some of the yellow, but the basis is still there. The yellow pops through a bit. Um, but we're just generating that flame look. And the next thing we're using is Molten Lava, which is a strong reddish orange. Uh, and this is going to be just for the uh, higher edges of the flames. And as you can see, I, I also watered it down quite a bit on the wet palette just to get those edges and keep some of the undercolors on it. If you guys haven't played um, Conquest before, it is a rank and file system. Also, it is a skirmish version where you can use the same models for both games, except for the skirmish version, you use a lot less models. And it's cool because they have an app to be able to build your whole army. You get all your spells, all your upgrades. It's really well done. Great game, by the way. I wish more people played in my area because I would have kept playing this. Next, we are using Carmelian, Carnelian skin. Sorry, that was Carmelian skin. It was Carnelian skin, which is interesting. Uh, this is a very dark reddish brown, uh, beautiful again with the coverage. I'm just so impressed with the War Paints Fanatics coverage. Like, it's just so impressive. And I am going to cut through at some point, sometimes during a miniature, especially these big ones like this, because you don't need to see me paint every single nook and cranny with the same color. So you get, an, you know, whatever skin is what you're painting on this Ifrit, which is a genie, I'm assuming. Uh, this is the new Sorcerer Kings faction. This is their brand new faction that just came out there. They just released it in April. Uh, this is one of the uh, Brutes um, uh, squads, I guess, or something. Uh, so, so it's the Brutes. And there's three in a pack. And this one is a dual conversion kit. So you can have either the uh, Sword Dancers or the Flame Casters. And keep your eye out. I'm going to be painting one of the Flame Casters real soon on the channel using my airbrush, my brand new Harder and Steenbeck airbrush. Uh, and we're going to paint, try and paint the entire thing just with the airbrush and then highlight with a brush. Uh, I'm using some speed paint here on the ground uh, just because I, like I said, I'm white. I did my base with a whole bunch of like little rocks and uh, I just want to get it prepared for the highlighting later on. The next one is Deep Azure, which is a deep greenish blue in the turquoises. We're using another flexible triad here. What a beautiful color. And the funny part is my son literally just painted his room this color. Uh, it's the exact same name. It's hilarious. It's the exact same color. Like if I had touch-ups to do on his wall, I could use this paint. Literally there, it's it's just amazing. So this is pretty much for a haul his outfit. They have this beautiful blue color outfit. And as I'm going along, you'll see on the third color, I'm going to mess it up a bit. But I will sort of clean it up a little bit. But I, yeah, you got to be careful sometimes. Some, I'm still learning with regards to layering, glazing. I haven't tried wet blending because I don't, I mean, I know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to have all the colors on your palette and get ready to go quickly and put the retarder on it so that it doesn't dry as fast so you can blend it all. I will try that eventually, uh, but we'll get to that at some point. Um, 
again though these war paints fanatics i am just so impressed with them yes it is much longer to paint uh but and uh, but it, it kind of makes you just sit there and you can relax like this guy took me over an hour in total to paint usually with speed paints uh i would be done this probably in 20 minutes uh because it does everything for you right does your highlight it does your 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 shadowing and does your color uh, this one is one of the higher, I think, mid ranges of the uh, violet colors, and I'm using the hex violets because I'm only using two colors from this triad, or flexible triad as they call it, uh, because um, the wash later on will really darken it down, and I just want to come back and clean it up. Uh, Brigade gray, I thought this was going to be a little bit more gray, but it's very light gray, and it's doing his beard here, uh, but it, it barely showed <laughs> anyways uh the dryad brown now for his, the rest of those belt part here um again i'm going to use only two of the flexible triads on this one again this was a really fun miniature to build uh whatever you're using uh glue for them too i use like uh what do they call is um sprue glue which has a little bit of sprue stuff in it so that whenever it it melts the, the plastic together it also fills in some gaps or you can also use it to fill in gaps after and you can really clear it up so instead of using green stuff or uh, uh, putty or anything like that you can just use the sprue glue and it works great ash gray now on his two scimitars here uh, i'm just covering up that white i'm not even going to touch this after it almost gives that the sword almost like a, a liver look to it it, ha it just hides a little bit the white uh technically i could have used this on his beard too and then use what i was going to do later on but um, the, the way i fix it after his beard he's going to look really cool or his goatee it's not actually a beard it's a goatee i think yeah anyways now we're going to start highlighting some stuff here a bit with a warm skin tone um topaz skin as you can see again i put some stabilizer in it uh just to uh make it a little bit thinner uh again it's not super thin but i noticed that once you let it dry it kind of soaks into the underpaint which is really cool like it like sort of reactivates what's underneath and then meshes it all together uh and this is where i'm like whoopsie I, oh no this is the good part this is the good part with the that blue here it's okay <laughs> it's the uh turquoise um color here uh so one of the triad colors again and that's a deep blues or whatever it was called and uh we get um it's just a nice shadow effect again like it's just anyways just amazing paints now some people will be like why are you putting orange tone all over the wash well because i'm gonna come back to it and fix it later be patient guys uh, again, I'm sorry I'm not doing Slap Chop or I'm not doing Warhammer because that seems like it's the big thing nowadays. It's always doing Warhammer and Slap Chop, Slap Chop this, Slap Chop that. Frankly, to me, Slap Chop is sloppy. I don't like it as much anymore. I will use it if it's necessary for making a miniature look too dark and just, I don't know, or I don't do it properly. Anyways. Next tone we're using is a dark blue tone here. We're gonna be putting it on all that uh, clothing, that the cloth parts here, uh, just to get into the recesses and make this really pop. Uh, it does a great job combining those two colors together, but, uh, and then you doing the same thing with the purple tone. Uh, however, on the blue one, I should have done the three levels of um, highlights first, and then coming back. Uh, blinding light there for his uh, goatee, and that's what actually does a good job on there. That's some strong skin shade tone wash on the skin again it just blends perfectly the two colors uh bring it all together and then when i do the highlights after it's gonna do just it's just gonna look amazing the only one i don't like is the lighter blue i think i went too light uh anyways greedy gold now one of the metallic paints uh, from the new war paints range do have to say they are a lot better consistency wise they um just go on so well they're a little bit more watered down they're not as goopy as their original ones which can be better because it's not getting rid of all the uh, nice uh, details of your miniature now there is a lot to paint on this guy that has to be gold there's all the trims his bracelets his earring uh, all the, the little parts on his beard or his goatee i should say and some things i wasn't sure what should have been blue what should have been gold it was a little hard to determine on the card even when I was looking at the artwork. 
Uh, so just go with your guts. You can follow along here what I'm doing. I'm skipping a little bit ahead because otherwise we'd be watching me paint gold for like 20 minutes. But there's so many little intricate details, like all these little um, jewels and stuff like that that are all in gold on this guy. And as you can see, I'm just going really slowly on it, taking my time. Uh, doing his wristbands there, which are, you know, I mean, just the details on this miniature just blows me away. Again, Parabellum Games, thank you again for sending this to me. Don't forget to check out their eShop and use East Mini 10 for 10% off and also support the channel uh, that way. So that would be great for anyone who's still playing this game, who wants to collect amazing looking miniatures, who's just uh, looking to paint miniatures as well. All right. Kraken Lavender. I've laughed at this one before. I've used it before, but I'm just doing these nice little edges on where I did the purple before. As you can see, the purple tone got a good job washing on the inside, getting it darker down a bit, but still keeping it light, really making where I need to highlight visible to me. And this is where I thought like the washes are a good idea after the second tone or the second one uh, so that you get your highlights. Now, you could probably go back over again with again the same tone and really mesh everything and then get the highlights again and the recess is darker. Now here is where I might have went to like, I don't know, I think it's marine mist. Uh, the feathers, good idea. The highlights on the parts of his clothing that are flopping in the air, good idea. The big parts of his clothing, not a great idea. I tried to blend it in as much as possible. This was watered down, there's no stabilizer added. I just watered it down and took a lot off, put it on my finger, put it on my hand. And I was just like, wow, this is not blending like I wanted to. And it's just removing all that beautiful blue that was underneath there. So I think this was way too light, number one. And, um, but I do put some blue tone on top of just those areas, like on his shoulder pads there on his chest to bring it back together. And it, it actually brings it all together. It cleans it up really well. Uh, but the highlight areas, I find those were perfect with this color, but the, like just that top part, the pauldrons and all that, just forget it. Uh, Jasper skin is our final highlight on his skin here. As you can see, I really watered this down. Uh, again, I put it on my finger a bit just to see the opacity of it. But look at how I'm, I'm so, I'm taking my time with these guys. And I know that you guys are probably on my channel saying, well, yeah, but you're supposed to spend less time painting. Well, yes and no. I mean, I still am spending less time painting because I'm enjoying this method of painting as well. And uh, while it's drawing, I'm working on other miniatures. While I'm between colors, I'm working on other miniatures. So I'm getting a little bit more done because I've given myself, oh, you can only have a certain amount of hours in a day or even like not too much. I think this guy took a lot out of me health-wise and my energy-wise. Uh, but if I say to myself, I give myself an hour and a half to paint some miniatures, well, if I can paint four like startups, uh, then I'm a little bit better off than just painting one in that whole, like that time. Cause sometimes painting and editing is my time and then I'm done pretty much for the day, which kind of sucks. I really wish I could do more and paint more and, but, uh, anyways, uh, that's a story for another time. Inner light. See, I'm coming back now with that inner light and just highlighting in the recesses, all that bright yellow and then highlighting with the, um, ruddy brown, ruddy umber. Anyways, on the belt there. There you have it, folks. A beautiful sword dancer uh, ready to hit the table and take on all the other factions. Don't forget to check out their eShop again. Uh, use the code EASTMINI10 and you'll be able to save 10%. I want to thank you guys for watching and we'll see you all in the next one.